have become the sinosure of uh, stock market investors, but among them, Federal Bank is up there in news. Uh, they gathered nearly 4,000 crores in terms of a QIP issue, and uh, CNBC TV again broke the news that uh, they were oversubscribed by several times, by the five, six times, uh, in terms of investors queuing up for the share. As well, a new interesting NRE account for women. So lots to talk to the managing director and CEO of Federal Bank. Sham Chinwasan, who is our guest today. Sham, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, let me first start with the QIP. Uh, it was our story. Uh, we heard that the subscription was six, seven times. Is that right? Yeah, it's... Uh, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's been almost like a T20 match, you know. So there's a lot of build-up to it and it turned out to be uh, really exciting. Uh, when we set out, uh, as you mentioned, last year in the AGM, we had an approval for up to 4,000 crores of capital raise. And we did two parts. One is a QIP for 3,000. The other 1,000 is uh, in the process of getting completed, which is, uh, you may have also seen that there's a preferential allotment to IFC. So an existing shareholder looking to take up uh, a higher share in the bank, and we're quite excited by that. On specific to QIP, like you mentioned, I think the subscription for the 3,000, 3,040 to be specific, we had bids closer to 20,000 crores. Yeah, okay. right? So it's quite a, quite a... Uh, exciting one. I had done one in 2017 when we received, I think, uh, close to two and a half or three times. I thought that was good. This time it, uh, yeah, it was quite uh, quite uh, uh, encouraging, exciting. Uh, the, uh, our pers you know, the objective was very clear, right? We did want a wider range of investors to look at us. We did want people to think of us as long term and not short term. Uh, we did want a mix of domestic and foreign. I'm happy that you would have seen the list that has been put out. Uh, I think the process got completed late last night. So the shareholders have got their shares and they are hopefully happy shareholders or will be very happy. Uh, it's been a nice and encouraging mix of people who are long-term shareholders uh, from outside India, from domestic, from the large mutual fund houses. And what was most encouraging is the uh, bids that came in were uh, hefty and quite contested for. So we did have a, a brief moment of can I get more kind of moment, right? More, more people asking us can I get uh, more of your, which is a, which is a, I think a good sign of confidence that the investors have placed in us. So all in all, it's a good, uh, good one and start to finish it took us about maybe five, six weeks. But we are where we are today. Okay. If you could just throw some numbers, where does this take you in terms of net worth, in terms of CRR, more than anything else, capital adequacy? Um, at the end of the June quarter, we were close to 14.8. Uh, this will add another 1.4 percent, so we'll enter the 16 or so. And when the hopefully the press process will complete. Uh, uh, on our AGM or around that time once the regulatory approvals and the shareholder approvals come, it will take us to mid-16s, right? So that's was one objective. Uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the other part of the question was on QIP per se, a mix of uh, investors have been, like I mentioned, both overseas and domestic. A good breath of investment. Good, good breath, yes. Okay. Uh, now, what do you do with the money? Are you expecting that you will be able to do much faster growth? Do you have an internal target in terms of advances growth? No, I think uh, the capital raise was to support the growth we've been talking of, right? We've been, uh, last few quarters, if you've seen, sequentially growing 4-5%. Yes. Right? And uh, this quarter that went by, uh, we registered a growth of about 20% Y on Y and sequentially about 4%. Yes. And Q1 is seasonally a low quarter, but we saw hefty growth. Uh, we believe that the... 18, 20 odd percent growth that we are seeking to do uh, is going to be aided by this. It's not like I would not. Would there be more risk weighted assets? We have a risk. Because you brought down your RWA. No, the RWA shift between one quarter and the other, I did explain on the air, was only because of a timing difference. There were some unrated customers who just got rated or added on. So it was not a risk profile didn't change, it was just a timing issue. But the longer point, the larger point is uh, our risk appetite is fairly framed. We don't want to sort of suddenly, because we have more money, uh, take higher risk, right? I think to guide uh, an 18-20% growth, we needed a certain capital adequacy. This process, we hit the triggers. Our internal trigger is CET1 is in and around 13. 
we need to look for a new capital raise so over the last 10 11 years if you seen federal bank which you have uh, we've been questioning you about raising money we've done one qip in 2017 and one pref in 2021 this is the only two happily this time we did both on the same day uh, and you know for that 4000 crore amount and this is only to enable the 18 20 odd percent growth that we are visualizing over the next 3 to 4 years our belief is this should keep us going for the next maybe 3 and a half 4 years if we grow at 18 percent and put back uh, the profits that we will hopefully keep making and the you know, last year was good if that momentum continues we should see you know capital short up was going to be my next question so when do you expect to need capital again certainly not for 3 4 years you say okay uh, what where do you see growth which are the areas that are asking for loans i think uh, our approach has been retail wholesale sort of weighted 55 45 retail 55 wholesale 45 uh, we don't want to stray away from that within that there are growth pockets if you take our retail book it's largely a secured book we have a very small unsecured and i say unsecured credit cards personal loans and to some extent businesses like microfinance gold commercial vehicles these are businesses that we have just about started so if you take the last 18 months these have grown at high double digit high means like 40 50 percent growth but they're growing off a very small base on the whole as an aggregate unsecured is about less than 3 percent of our overall outstandings we believe in a three year phase as is this growth uh, will dictate unsecured and retail retail part of unsecured part of retail will be probably about 10 15% of the whole book right so the growth opportunity we are 1.2% share of market credit market right uh, i don't think we need to take crazy risk in any one area to grow <clears throat> and that's been our model we've moved from 0.76% share of assets to 1.25 1.3 so gaining share i believe we can go up to 2% share without taking any untoward disproportionate risk and still be rewarded for that so i is so broad based okay so with the current risk matrix itself 18 20 should not be a uh, we should be able to do okay but you know people are talking about a lot of ai uh, you know because of the digital footprint perhaps that is now available uh, some chairman and you may have seen them in the uh, other other media as well saying that our insec i am more confident of my unsecured than my secured you uh, you know what to go down that path no, no, it's not like going down the path See, i'll tell you uh, uh, i did start my career in unsecured right uh, so i have a feeling uh, these look good in good times right so you can't get too carried away but the issue in unsecured is not lending the issue in unsecured is collecting right so if you don't have the collection infrastructure because per ticket is few lakhs or few thousands you can't put an army to collect that so you have to use technology you have to use science you have to use data you have to have smarts to ensure that you're collecting and that is an institutional capability that doesn't get built overnight right so you can't buy that capability off the shelf so i do think organizations that are stepping up on unsecured are ones who have established that capability for long many years a relatively late entrant need to be quite thoughtful about how much of your book has to be unsecured and how fast you want to grow and unsecure knowing that we have been calibrated i'm saying still we're growing 40 50% but on a very small base so i am happy for that growth but it should not dominate the overall book for any bank i mean that's at least our approach i would want to so one person would upload you for the sans and that would be reserve bank i am hoping okay. they are uh, they have been cautioning uh, banks and ndfcs about the unsecured piece Okay, I'll, I'll come back to growth in a jiffy. Uh, you make uh, find some money coming your way because you are also looking to list Fed Fina. Any timetable you have in mind? After all, the market is in a giving mood, so would you speed it up? No, I'll tell you on Fed Fina. <coughs> they are uh, we have seventy four percent and our partner Two North has twenty six percent. The company is doing well and growing. Right? They need capital for their growth, so the capital issuance which is likely to happen in the you know foreseeable future uh, is to raise money for the company to run the ofs part which uh, either us or our partner does is more uh, a demand of the partner they may have their fund may have six year horizon so they may have a higher exit plan in our case 
But and you are doing an OFS, I thought. Even you want to take a smaller component. Okay. So the component that we get as an OFS is very uh, m minimal. So it's not a. Uh, we still, at this juncture, are a large investor. We think uh, our our investment there is uh, something for the long run. So there is no monetizing plan on that. Yes. It's, uh, the company is doing well. We want that to grow. And over passage of time, we'll see. At this point in time, two not may do a higher part of that. But beyond that, the company okay, should So I should not mix it up with fundraising. Yeah. Okay. Now, to come back to uh, the main bank, uh, the other talking point for all banks have, is going to be net interest margins. Uh, we know that one big bank has taken on a huge asset in the form of HDFC. Uh, though, when we spoke to HDFC, they said, we have not raised our deposit rates. Nevertheless, there is a competition for deposits. So do you think for the system and for yourself, margins now have peaked? Uh, I think last quarter and the one, I mean, Q1 of FY24 and Q4 of FY23, where our uh, quarters where we saw the margin contraction happen and we had guided for that. In Q1 post results we have said we have a line of sight, all things being equal, our margin expansion from here on will start only because the way we have structured our book and our ALM and our repricing and our, uh, and our uh, transference of rate increase or decrease to the client as a different model. So we believe in FY24 here on all things being equal, no rate increase or no rate decrease, we believe our margin expansion which we have been guiding for a 5-7 basis points improvement from where we are is very likely and that's our conviction because of book, book structure allows us to do that. Okay, uh, can you elaborate a little more? Is it that you don't have, uh, you have a lot of EBLR loans uh, which will start uh, getting See, higher? Uh, we, I, I mean, why, why are you so confident that you'll be yeah, able sure. to spend much? Uh, we do all our rate transmission T plus 1, okay. right? So, we do technically, ours maybe one quarter or 90 days After ahead of the other. Uh, oh, so right. Okay. If bank A or B or C, they may pass their rate increase or decrease T plus 90 or T plus whatever the cycle is. Ours is T plus 1. To that extent, the rate transference is immediate from us both on the asset and we have a savings which is linked to repo. Okay. Right. Oh, oh. So the rate transference on both instances are happening and our, as we plot out our term book, uh, we see the incremental rate of growth of deposits and what, what price points that incremental deposit is coming in. How are we priced our one year term? Large part of term book is always one year. We believe our margin expansion is, uh, expansion in the sense the contraction that happened, a part of it will get released. It's not like a, you know, above the peak rate. It's just it comes back. Uh, the 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 second point on the term is that, as you said, the big bank has not. Uh, we 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 have not raised our savings rate. In fact, through the cycle, our savings rates have been at the lowest end, two and a half, now three point five. Right. So we don't pay, and that's not our business model. But we do have a large. A franchise which is very retail in nature. Our deposit structure, you may have noticed, is significantly retail. So we have a customer at the other end with an individual. Yes. And we are blessed with a very good non-resident franchise and we've been working very hard to preserve that and gain share. So I do think, uh, and the Reserve Bank's recent choice of withdrawal of the 2000 rupee note also threw in some uh, plus for the market, there was some deposit accretion that happened. I think all that has introduced, uh, increased the flow of money. Credit creates deposits. If credit is growing 18-20%, which it has been for the big banks and at an industry level in the mid-teens, deposit creation is following. So I think, in my judgment, I hope I'm right, the worst part of the deposit accretion challenge has moderated. You will see, and I will I fondly, I strongly believe we will see increase in deposit growth as it is visible. And the two big banks, HDFC and SBI, between them they anyway grow two lakh crores a quarter, right? Deposits, yes. and we've been gaining share. Yes. So means there's momentum in the markets. So that's what I would believe. Okay. Well, I'm not done with the liability questions because uh, Federal Bank has announced a very interesting NRE account for women uh, to coincide with the FIFA Women's uh, uh, Championships. More on that after the break.
Welcome back to this very special chat with the Federal Bank Managing Director and CEO, Sham Srinivasan. Sham, thank you for your patience. So, uh, we just got the press release that you'll have announced a very interesting NRE product for women. Now, why would a savings account for women be different? And what are you planning uh, to net with this product? No, I tell you, the, uh, you know, I also believe that gender, you don't have to uh, you know, discriminate on products. But here it's a positive discrimination. It is not, uh, it is just to meet that segment requirement. Gender is incidental, right? Uh, we, uh, we have a fairly large and a program that we started 10 years back called Mahila Mitra. Targeted women customers, domestic or non-resident. And uh, there is an element in the non-resident which is important and interesting insight. Um, at some point in time, many of our non-resident customers were male living in the UAE. Okay. The Middle East. Okay. They are family members in India who were the recipients of the remittances and they needed some privileges for that to be convert, not just consumed but also kept as bank products okay. and bank. So we thought to address that audience, the, if the family member yes. is male and outside and the uh, spouse is living in India, invariably the spouse is taking care of the children, the, the elders in the family, yes. uh, most of the India requirements are met. So they needed a more bespoke solution for their requirements for India use, yes. right? That gave us an opportunity to say, with the with the advancement in uh, profile of non-residents, and we've also thankfully increased our uh, dispersion across the UAE uh, and the Middle East largely, where we've got more high net worth customers coming in who have now started demanding saying, we need the same privileges as my spouse is getting in the airports or whatever. So, it one led to the other. So, it's not like born yesterday. It had, it had a it's life. Evolved. It's evolved. So, the NRE Eve product, which is NRE Plus, and yes. Eve, NRE Eve Plus, Plus. E, 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 e Plus, is just on the day of FIFA launch, we did it. Just coincident, you know, topical. It's quite exciting. We had a client on the event when she spoke. I almost made, I should have thought I should have made her the product manager. Oh. She made such a compelling speech that she spoke about features that even I didn't know that the product had. Right? She, she, she was, uh, I think she's the owner of a small business there. So the product is bespoke, it's tailored for the premium needs. Uh, it has uh, offers which are linked to what mm. typically women want to use. But I think the thing that caught most people's attention is the ex the offer to go to lounges across the world. Okay. Right? So I guess these are the uh, relatively well heeled to travel more often. So I think, yeah. And these are very attractive, you know, uh, those of us who of course even rarely go abroad, the fact that it gives you a lounge yeah, access is, is a big it, it, attraction. And I would only say domestic lounges are no longer attractive. It's international lounges. Yeah. Because domestic lounges are crowded. Uh, yeah, areas. because so everyone has entry. So there is a, a, an attraction. In, uh, in these foreign lounges. But uh, uh, Sham, to uh, come back to the uh, you know, uh, uh, card issue, this is very incidental. Reserve Bank has put out a, a, a draft for discussion with the uh, uh, bank uh, uh, management or bank management that credit cards should not uh, have exclusive arrangements. Like, I mean, you can't be only giving Visa or only giving Master or uh, whatever. I don't think anyone is giving exclusive rupee. But do you think that this is uh, something which banks can be disadvantaged because uh, you may have a very attractive tie-up with Visa or Master? It can. I think in the long run it is normalized. Okay. You see, these things have only point in time impact because some bank may have been very advanced in their relationship with one uh, franchise and may have embedded relationships, contracts. But I do think, uh, you know, yeah, I don't know. But two years, so one, one, two years, these things will normalize because everybody has to. Once a rule is set, everybody has to step it. So, yeah, everybody. Not much you can argue again. You can in the in the draft stage we can present, but if it becomes a rule, it becomes a rule. So I would think it will get normalized. Yeah, and since it is a handicap, if it is a handicap for yeah. everyone, it doesn't change the. And in the new world, I think the uh, I, none of the franchises may like it because the branding behind is less and less relevant because. Features are getting commonplace, right? I think client experience uh, is going to trump everybody over everything else. The brands, in my view, are going to be built by client experience and not 
the brand will be representing everything so it's going to be a very very lifestyle may have a pull like you say you know using an airport lounge in dubai or in uh, london maybe. but if that feature gets replicated by everybody else then it is not that it's the that's why we chose the line digital as the for human at the core still i mean i could be wrong but still people want to make that uh, engagement which is with the human right voice, uh, yeah. that in fact our annual report which is coming out tonight is about humanizing banking a uh, whole team is you know human i think banking uh, whatever it is rista aap se okay. so we want to that we want to no, read for that dinosaur like me having a human being <laughs> to speak to is all you know that. i don't think it's dinosaur uh, if you're a dinosaur i'm double dinosaur <laughs> but it's not dinosaur you are finding you can pull youngsters around that human touch in fact the comp- campaign is not created by us right created by the younger officers okay they are the ones so who there are we, are are we don't have to feel yeah. bad about it okay now to come back to the uh, uh, nim part the other thing that reserve bank has put on the table is expected credit loss now i don't know how quickly they will go because that will take the entire banking sector along but if it were to be april 2024 uh, would that mean an increase in um, provisioning we have understood it's likely to be april 25 okay and a uh, 5 year uh, yes 5 year is, is very clear right? but That's i didn't know about the start date my understanding is april 25 but i think for most banks at least the ones who have enough data of the past we've been submitting our uh, ecl data to rbi for now 3 years plus right because all performance yes. has been submitted and re- our regulators have been taking it uh, i would think the impact will be quite modest on capital it may be 50 60 basis points taken across 5 6 year 5 year period it will not it be it won't be material yeah and anyway now your capital rich <laughs> <laughs> but okay we don't have to worry about april 25 questions now uh, let's worry about the here and the now is how is the capex cycle looking you said that the worst of fighting for deposits probably is behind us uh, do you think there can be loan undercutting or is there enough demand uh, for everyone is that a pressure on margins is my point See, if there is a convergence to better credit rated customers they will dictate price right i wonder if the so triple a's will always be yeah, today's today's paper i think one of the publications had a, a margin by rating band uh, pricing yield bar by rating band so it's evident that triple uh, a is around you know 7 and a half to 8 and a half Double A is eight and a half to nine and a half. So that I think is now pretty much that within the seven and a half, eight and a half depends on relationship pricing. The client may yield because customer is also aware of all the progress in the market, right? They have alternate instruments, but I think the demand is genuinely there. Um, yeah, there will be some uh, war for price, uh, uh, you know, good client pricing. But I, if we who are one one point two percent share player are able to grow at twenty percent, and by distribution. the best banks are all no less so and all are seen growth yeah. right so i am and it's not uh, growth that is uh, some other form of money is getting substituted this is more bona fide credit growth yeah. and we all seeing uh, you know quite encouraged by all the news flow that there is new capex coming green shoots coming off uh, are you seeing it because you I, know, we hear it but no, you guys no, i tell you our, our own example right um, in the q1 the one by and even the 25 days of this quarter uh, we have a hierarchy of a loan approval mechanism in the bank right right up to my board committees at my level as my committee we met maybe in one month six times already oh right at my board level committee we met maybe three times this is in q2 in q1 we met like maybe 12 times That's the rush of uh, there is proposals coming in now. All may not get approved. All may not meet our standards, or we may not be able to price attractively. But I am saying that much activity is there. Yes, I mean we. Have, How we does have this a, compare with a normal thing much a higher. year ago? Yeah, much higher. I mean, much last year was did. good. Last year was good. The previous year, I mean, it was like just out of COVID, mm. so we were just beginning to see that traction. Mm. FY23 was the year when we saw maximum action. I am seeing that repeat in FY24. which is what gives us the confidence that there is momentum in the market okay this is unimpeachable proof of the india no, growth story absolutely i in fact that was my message to our shareholders the india say india growth story looks quite promising you are speaking to shareholders so that's a great story on which we can wind up this conversation thank you very much shyam shrivast for spending time with us uh, the story from one of the biggest bankers in the country the india growth story is real and ticking on that note thank you very much for watching more news and updates for you.